In this lesson, we're going to write the equation for a sine function and a cosine function that will model uh, the graph, the curve uh, that we see right here. So uh, this is a skill that you're going to have to do. Um, we've learned how to uh, certainly, you know, given an equation, graph uh, a function. Well, this is the opposite. We've got the function, and now we need to know the equation that actually produced uh, this graph. So to get started, um, we need to take a look and and do some analysis of uh, sort of the graph and we'll pull out some important features. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to notice that uh, this graph appears to have all of the crests, that is the maximum points, um, at 5. So I'm just going to go ahead and visually put that in so that you can see it. So it looks like 5 right there, and this was 5. Uh, it has the the maximums. Okay, so that was a five right there. Um, where are the minimums? Well, they look to be down here at the bottom, and I'm just going to put a line across at the minimums. And those minimums, well, they are at negative one, negative two, uh, negative three. So the total distance between the five and the negative three is eight. Okay, and that is important. Well, why? Well, the axis of this curve is exactly halfway in between the crests and the troughs, the maximums and the minimums. So that puts the axis of this curve uh, right in the middle. So if we look here, the axis of the curve would belong right there. Okay, and that axis would be at y equals 1. Okay, well, what does that make the amplitude? Well, the amplitude is this distance here. Okay, so we have an amplitude of 4 because we know that the amplitude is the distance from the axis of the curve, the middle, uh, up to either a maximum, a trough, a peak, or uh, a minimum, a trough. All right, well, what else can we pull out of this uh, graph? Well, the next thing we need to analyze is the period. And the period is the distance um, between two crests. So it could be this distance here. It could be the distance between two troughs. They're all equivalent. Or uh, the distance for it to complete one complete cycle. So for example, from here all the way to here. Okay, any of those distances uh, would represent the period. So, in order to do that, we kind of need to know some of these exact points. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, reveal some of those points to us so that we can take a look. So, let's take a look at, at those points there, and this will help us uh, gather information about the period. So, we can see that this first point here at the uh, at the top. Um, is 0, 5, and the next crest is here, and it's at 185. So I can clearly see that the period is 180. Okay? All right. Well, let's summarize some of this information uh, that we have for the, uh, for the sine curve here. So the period, uh, which is the distance between two crests, two troughs, is 180. We know that the amplitude, well, it was 4. We know that the axis was at y equals positive 1. And I guess the only other thing we need uh, is we need sort of the k value. And the k value is based on the period. Now, if the period is 180, we could fit two complete cycles inside 360. And that means the k value is 2. Okay? Well, how else can we get this k value of 2? Well, all we do is we take 360 and we divide it by the period length that we have observed, and that gives us our k value of 2. All right? Okay, so this is all the information we need 
to be able to start to graph or to uh, write an equation here. The last piece of the puzzle depends on if we are trying to write a sine or a cosine function. All right. So let's assume that we're going to write a sine function first. Well, what we have to do is we have to look at the graph and we have to try to pick out where we see a sine function. Okay. Now, I'm going to pick out a couple, but we'll use just one of them, just to show you that there's a bunch of them sitting in there. Uh, I see one sine function actually starting here and going down and back up like that. Okay, so if you see that, that's a sine function. Uh, I see another one right here and going up there. And how am I drawing these? Well, I know that the sine function always starts on the axis. So that means that this is a sine function as well, from here to there. And in fact, this is the sine function that I'm going to use. Okay? So you can see that there are the three zeros, and there's a minimum and there's a maximum. So what would be the equation of that sine function? Well, all I have to realize is that this sine function has been pushed over by 45 degrees. Okay? The other thing I'm going to notice is that this sine function opens down, whereas normally the sine function would open up. So what would be the equation of this sine function then? It would be y equals, we'll put in our amplitude, which is 4. This sine function is reflected. It's going down first. So that reflection will be indicated by a negative. I'll write the sine. Then I need the k value. The k value was 2. So that goes in next. Then I need the shift. The shift was 45. So this is going to be theta, and it was to the right, minus 45. It's kind of small, but there we go. And then finally, the axis at the end, plus 1. So that's the, cos or the uh, sine function. Now, what if we wanted it to be represented as the cosine function? Well, that would be just as easy. All we have to do is go looking on the graph for a cosine function, and if we look pretty closely, we don't have to look too far, there is the cosine function right there. Okay? It actually lines up perfectly uh, with the zero. So for a cosine function, we're not going to have any phase shift to the left or right. It is going to share the same amplitude, and it is going to share the same axis, but that is about it. So we'll write y equals it is the normal cosine function, so it's not reflected, so it won't be negative, but it does have an amplitude of 4. We'll write cosine, same period, so it shares the same k value. It does not have a phase shift. It doesn't need to be moved left or right. It's at 0, so we'll just have 2 theta. And then finally, it does share the same axis of y equals 1, so it would have a plus 1 at the end. Okay, so if you're asked to model this curve here using either the sine function or the cosine function, one solution, there are others, for the sine function is that one, and one solution, there are others, for the cosine function is that one.